Hey everyone, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. A Taste of My Life Hi gang, first post. I've been in various forms of support for about 25 years, and recently, after a series of quittings, I've found myself as the one and only support person for an office of 650 people, mostly lawyers, who are about as tech-savvy as the average Colobus monkey. <laughs> this morning I had the perfect exchange that I thought would be worthy of a share. We're a city government office that still uses Novell, so I'll be using some non-AD lingo. My computer isn't allowing me to log in. See the screenshot. Screenshot says, you have been locked for bad passwords. Okay, I unlocked you. Give it another try. It's still saying it's wrong. Okay, all I can do is reset it. I reset it to password. It'll ask you to change it when you log on. Five minutes pass. The printer I want to use has a lock on it. Send screenshot of a printer with a lock icon. That just means it's locked down to certain users, which includes you. What happens when you try it? They send screenshots of a box saying, you are running under grace logins. You must change your password before further print requests can be made with no text. That means just what it says. You need to change your password after I reset it. Did the continue box come up? If not, log off and back on. Make sure to click continue when it comes up. That'll prompt you to change your password. I don't have a password for the printer. Uh, it's the computer password. The one I changed this morning. You need to change your password after I reset it. Did the continue box come up? If not, log off and back on and make sure to click continue when it comes up. That'll prompt you to change your password. Yes, it asked if I wanted to change since I only had three more logins before it expired, but I didn't change it. You have to change it when it pops up. That's why you can't print. Should I restart the computer? Log off and back on and make sure to click continue when it comes up. That'll prompt you to change your password. The third time I've pasted the same text. No response after that. By no means the most infuriating exchange I've had this morning, but a good example of what supporting lawyers is like. Yeah, my mom worked for lawyers for years. Most of them were really great at the certain areas of law that they studied, but, uh, but there were quite a few that were about as smart as a sack of hammers. Unicorns do exist. Y'all, I support a K-12 SIS, so I have a lot of users with a lot of different needs. One of the big problems we have is that some folks who get a little knowledge mess things up by using their partial knowledge to not ask when they get in over their heads. Today, one of our lovely summer school chairs sent an email. Some kids registered for summer school didn't get charged the fee. She sent me an example, too. Yes, an example student. I looked at the super secret screen I wrote that helps fix basic problems. Nope, it looks like the kid wasn't registered in the fee assigning way. I conferred with our trainer. What do we think about giving Ashley access? Can we trust her? Note, this screen is fluid. I wrote it because I was sick of going into the DB to write SQL to do repeatable stuff. But every year there's been a new secretary that's ticked me off, so I adjust the screen, and I'm the only one who knows how to use it. I know, I know. One of these days things will be stable. Trainer concurred. Ashley is good. She follows directions. She also stops when things don't go as planned. All I needed to hear. We hopped on a Google Meet and showed her the steps. She presented and showed us she was good with our directions. We were very clear. This screen was an override. It works, but it's not guaranteed to work if you go off script. You cool? She was cool. 25 kids needed to be changed. She got through 24 and one fired an error. Instead of trying to fix that issue on her own, she stopped emailed me, and asked if I could look at his record. Dreamboat. Yeah, hang on to Ashley, man. It's pretty hard to find somebody to follow directions exactly the way you want them to. A little cooperation and teamwork really make all the difference. The old ID10T error. I've worked in tech support for 20 years, but for the last 10 I've been teaching architecture and 3D modeling, as well as running tech at a school. The thing you need to know about teachers is that, generally, they're unwilling to learn, well, anything. So, I carpool with the general computing teacher, and the co-teacher is a bit older and is a self-professed idiot when it comes to computers. And they ain't lying. I mean, we're talking MacKeeper, Chromium, Yahoo Safe Search, the whole lot of annoying and avoidable computer things. One day, they're complaining that her computer doesn't work anymore and needs some help. I asked, did you restart recently? Yes, this morning. So I have her swing by my office. Google wouldn't load, drive, docs, nothing. So I see Chrome needs an update, as well as noticing all the aforementioned garbage. Took a look at the Chrome version. 85. 
This person hadn't restarted Chrome since like August, at the beginning of the school year. I updated it via the glaring red update button, restarted her computer, boom, everything worked so fine. Oh, thank you so much. What was the problem? Oh, nothing serious. You just had the old ID 10 t error. Happens all the time. Let me know if you need any more help. Believe people when they tell you about themselves and never believe them when they tell you they've restarted. As Greg House always says, patients always lie. What does your wife think about your demo? Our company built a Big Brother software that could basically tell you everything that your laptop did during the day, so you could see if licenses were actually used. The thought was that unused license apps could be uninstalled and the license moved to machines that could use it. Our sales guys thought it was really cool to demo our business network, as we could purposely mock up scenarios that made great demos. Product management then added a new feature that let it track your internet usage by site, so you could gauge usage of licensed SAAS sites or intranet sites. Sales guy brings us his laptop and starts showing us how it won't connect to the projector he wants to use for a product sales kickoff demo he's doing for our company in just a few minutes to show off the new feature. We fix that easily and he takes a quick moment to run through the start of his demo to make sure it really is fixed. Sales guy. So let me show you the new feature that shows you my workday. As he starts the projector and switches to the live app, obviously not understanding the app also tracks sites you access even after work hours or when not connected to the business network. App. Most used site, match.com, and it presents a graph showing most usages in the evening. The second most used site was also a dating site, although a bit more NSFW. Us. Uh, sales guy, you probably don't want to show your usage, and we make a note to check the blocked sites list. Sales guy, who is not actually looking at the actual content. This is cool though, as you can see where I was on the internet and still doesn't look at the actual content as he packs up and heads to the conference room for a company-wide demo to his coworkers, who know there is a Mrs. Sales Guy. The train wreck was spectacular. He found other employment soon after. Not sure about his marital status after that, however. Well, the Sales Guy was right. It showed everything. Absolutely everything. It's nice to be proven correct every so often. I work with a bunch of different types of analyzers and control panels. I have a customer with a simple to use panel that triggered a relay in the event of specific alarms. He'd asked if I could update the configuration on it to add some additional alarm events to trigger that relay, so I did that for him during a routine service visit. Unfortunately, due to the industries I generally work in, I learned to work on the equipment that I'm there to work on and trained to work on. I'm here to work on that specific box on the wall and the specific equipment connected to it. I'm not going to touch anything outside of that. So sometimes I can feel like a bit of an a-hole for refusing to work on other equipment on a site. I might answer any questions or point the customers in what I think is the right direction, but making sure to completely cover my butt the whole time. So I have the customer's control panel reconfigured and confirmed that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing when the various alarms happen and aren't happening. It all looks good. A week or so later, I get an email from the customer saying that my control panel isn't working properly. I happened to have a scheduled visit for routine work the following week and asked the channer if it would be okay if I looked into it then. They were fine with that. Routine service visit goes fine and I do my testing on the control panel. It's doing what it's supposed to do. I note this from my report. A few weeks later, the customer asked me to come back to the site and review an installation by another company. And while there, if I could look at the other control panel because it still isn't working right. No problem. My review of the installation goes as expected and I test the control panel again. It's working fine. I note this in my report. The customer is getting a little frustrated because I'm telling him that my panel is working fine, but another contractor is insisting that he isn't seeing the signal, a switch closing, from my panel, and that there must be a problem with my panel. Another site visit is arranged where the other contractor and I will be on site together to sort it out. We meet. He seems alright, but overly cocky that the problem is on my end of things, so I suggest we start there. We go to my panel and I ask him what he's expecting to see. An open contact in normal conditions, a closed contact in alarm conditions. Perfect. I show the other contractor the relay, take out my multimeter and test the relay with the system in normal condition. As expected, the contact is open. I simulate the alarm conditions. We can hear the relay click. The LED on it has turned on, showing that it has been energized, and I test it with my multimeter. It's now a closed contact. But we don't hear the audible alarm that is supposed to be triggered on his end. I ask him if he'd just try to test the relay with his gear. He doesn't. So we start going through the rest of the circuit. By this stage, I know I'm good. Nice. Known it for weeks. 
but I want to see where the issue was. The other contractor checks an I.O. panel that's part of his setup, where it's supposed to see the closed contact from my panel. We simulate an alarm again. My panel triggers the relays. His I.O. doesn't see it. He tests the wires coming into his I.O. panel with his equipment and confirms it's a closed contact, and then notices the problem. His I.O. panel is wired incorrectly. He just looks a little sheepish. I smile. He goes to his work vehicle, gets the things he needs, it was a 90 second fix, and I trigger the relay in my panel again. His I.O. sees that. His main panel the I.O. is connected to sees it, and the audible alarm sounds, and all is right with the world again. I made sure to note all of it in my report, too. That was the start of my day, which happened to be a Friday, and the rest of the day went well. Nice way to start the weekend. That's one thing I learned on certain jobs. Before you start blaming the other guy, go through your own stuff first to make sure it's all in order. Localized public address fault. Travel with me back through the mists of time to a younger, gentler age. Whoops, too far. Set year to 1995. Mobile phones were around but resembled house bricks and were decidedly not smart. Working in building maintenance was a younger, healthier, handsomer me. The facilities help desk assistant passes on a call. The building manager is asking why no one has fixed the public address system, henceforth PA, fault yet. We look around confused. What PA system fault? He says there's an intermittent beep. Well, maybe it's just his floor, not the entire building, so off I trot to find the boss of bosses, our ultimate client. Arriving at his floor and heading to his office, I listen intently for any intermittent beep. Either it's really widely spaced or the problem solved itself. Arriving at the boss's domain, I knock and when approved, enter. The boss is irritated. Will no one rid me of this incessant noise? My protestations of ignorance are heated. The boss magnanimously explains that he can hear a noise everywhere he goes within the building. Once more I listen and indeed, now even I can perceive an infrequent faint chirping noise. I turn my head on the side. One ear pointed to the heavens, the other to the floor. Another chirp. From there. I point excitedly at his desk drawer. Together we inspect the contents. A calculator, some pens, a ruler, nothing of note. The calculator chirps. Revelation. Tis not a calculator, but instead a personal organizer, clinging desperately to life as its battery fails, calling for help in the only way it knows how. Medical attention was rendered, slightly delayed by the need to visit the nearest shop to acquire suitable batteries. Exit hero, stage left. Too long didn't read. Foolish knave, I'll not pander to your whim. If thou desirest to know the secrets hidden within this treatise, that I shall have to suffer the reading of it. That's too funny. He could hear the beep all through the building. Eh, it's because it was in his pocket. Nice. The printing issue that wasn't. I'm an on-site tech for the stores of a retail chain. This day I was working at a store where the employee computers had recently been upgraded. I can confirm they got newer computers. Can't confirm that they got better computers. As soon as I walked in, an employee came up to me saying, quote, My computer hasn't been able to print since the upgrade. I performed the upgrades for many stores, including this one, and can say some of the new computers were slower than others, but I can't print was not an issue I had seen. In my head, I figured it was a printer mapping issue, computer image issue, or user error. Considering I can only help with the last one, that's what I was hoping for. The first two options require waiting on hold for an extended amount of time and maybe your issue gets fixed by the end of shift, or maybe next week. I ask her to show me the issue and we walk back to her computer. She proceeds to show me a report in a company program, hits print screen, opens a new email and attempts to control V, the screenshot into the email, and attempts to control V the screenshot into the email, but nothing appears. She tells me this is how she used to add screenshots to email, and I honestly don't know if there's a better way to do so using the company program on the company workstation. What I do know is this is not a printer problem, and for that I am thankful. Having watched her process carefully, I asked to try and proceeded to do the same thing as her, only I hit an extra key along with print screen, and voila, screenshot embedded in the email. As you probably guessed, when we upgraded the computers, we also upgraded the keyboards. The new keyboards have an FN key, and I later confirmed the old ones did not. I didn't grow up with a keyboard that had an FN key, and remember the first time I saw it, thinking, when did they add that? Turns out it existed before I was born. I just never saw it as a kid and I was still surprised she hadn't seen it by now. I try my best to assist the day's lucky 10,000 politely when I get the chance, and she was happy to learn she could add her report like she's used to, just with one extra key press. 
it's funny you get used to doing certain things a certain way for so long and one little thing changes and it completely throws your process off never forget the basics so for some very short backstory i work as a data center technician for a fairly large isp so a few months ago i was sent out to the data center as one of our older mail relay servers went down by this point the server had already been rebooted by remote hands who verified that they could see a sent OS login screen, so the server itself was up, leading us to believe it was the network fault. I arrive in the data center and head up to the cabinet, and the first thing I check is the NICs at the back of the server. Link lights were solid, and the activity lights were blinking away happily, so I got to work. Some of you might already see where this is going. I grabbed a caddy, logged in, and started running some tests. First try to ping test. Destination net unreachable. Not a great sign, so next was a trace route. But the connection died on the very first hop, which made me think it might be the switch it was connecting to. Now we hadn't had any other complaints about anything else being down, so I knew the switch was likely not dead, but it needed to be checked. I started a continuous ping before jumping on the phone with one of our network guys who tried finding the switch, using our aggregation switches, on his end to no avail. Truthfully, one of our best networking wizards, one that likely would have found the switch simply because of how well she knows our environment, wasn't available. So a fair amount of time was spent trying to find said switch, before he eventually gave up and told me that I needed to trace the cabling to locate the switch. Made worse by the fact that whoever had installed the equipment, long before my time, had decided to label nothing. If any of you have ever worked in a data center, you know how much of a headache this can be, especially when you have multiple switches across three rows of cabinets. 22 cabinets per row. Fun. So I dutifully grab a ladder, but before I proceed to trace this cable to the ends of the earth, an idea hits me, one that probably should have smacked me in the face when I first walked in. I walked back over to the server, disconnected both ethernet cables, and reconnected them and went to check the monitor. 64 bytes from 8.8.8.8, ICMP, sequence equals 7, TTL equals 60, time equals 1. I have no idea what any of that means. I proceeded to facepalm hard enough to leave a nice red mark before packing up and heading home. Turns out the reboot that our remote hands did fixed what was actually wrong, but when they connected a display to check for a login prompt, they'd bumped the ethernet cable just enough that we had link and activity lights, but without a functional network connection. To add, we did improve our network diagrams and DC layout a lot in the following weeks to make sure we could find any of our switches with relative ease going forward. Moral of the story, never ever skip the basics no matter how much the blinking lights try to convince you to. Yep, I'll say it again. Usually it's the simple things. Usually. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you've enjoyed this content, would you do me a favor? Would you consider giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and maybe click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fact out with the beard telling you stories. See ya!